Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today I'm filming a collaboration with some members of FRAGCOM. It is a collaboration of the seven heavenly virtues. So be an angel and check out their videos of virtue. As a group, we are all bringing you our seven heavenly virtues in the form of seven heavenly fragrances. This video takes us away from sin and brings us something a little more angelic. Through all the darkness, the distress, the fear, the anxiety in this unsettling time, this world could use a little more virtue. Let's begin talking about my fragrances that represent the seven heavenly virtues. So I'm going to start with the virtue of chastity. And for this virtue, the fragrance I have chosen is Lo à la Rose by Maison Francis Cogjan. So with chastity, it is the moderation of desire and pleasures, or you could also go as far as to say it's abstinence. In the case of Lo à la Rose, talking more about love in the most innocent, angelic way, so it's love without any desire of lust. And as we know, the opposite to chastity is lust. Now this fragrance is far too innocent to be connected to anything that is lust. It's a light, airy, angelic breeze of soft pink rose petals. Grapefruit gives it a little bit of sweetness. Just a touch watery and green to make it feel ethereal and clean. And with a slightly bashful performance, it floats away with its head in the clouds. It leaves behind a pretty scent trail of rosy cheeks and love's first kiss. So Maison Francis Cagjan, Lo à la Rose, for the heavenly virtue of chastity. So our next virtue is that of temperance, and its sinful opposite is gluttony. So of course temperance is the control of over-excess. And the fragrance I have chosen to represent that of temperance, Smeraldo by Sylvain Delacourt. That was not helpful. Smeraldo is the perfect fragrance to represent temperance. It is so beautifully watery, clean and fresh. It is so angelic and it is the absolute opposite of a gourmand. The focus and beauty in this fragrance is the note of Angelica. And as Angelica is only three letters away from being angel, that is a good start. Angelica is a herb that smells a little bit sour, a little bit bitter, but still creamy and soft. In here it's supported with notes of lime and pear, there's vetiver, hawthorn, pine needles, really, really beautiful notes. But overall, the composition is very watery. It's very refreshing. It's incredibly crisp and clean. There's zero sweetness in here. The scent always makes me think of a glass of sparkling water with a hint of cream soda in it. It's like having a salad and washing it down with sparkling water. It smells like a healthy organic tonic of absolute purity. And I think it perfectly represents temperance. So next up is the virtue of kindness, and that is the tenderness and concern for others. It's opposing sin is envy. And the fragrance I've picked for kindness, it was a really easy choice, actually. Because it's not so much that the fragrance smells kind, it's actually quite a challenging fragrance, but the nature in which I received this was incredible kindness. Burnt Cedar Rainbow Doves by 460, no, 4160 Tuesdays. This fragrance was sent to me very kindly as a gift. And it was sent to me by three amazing people here in Fragcom. Three people that I now very proudly call my friends. It was sent to me at a very difficult time. A close member of my family died. And this fragrance is one that I mentioned, reminded me of them very strongly. This is actually discontinued. I had a small decant of it which I was kind of too scared to use. One day, just out of the blue, those three absolute amazing angels that they are sent me this fragrance. So Scott, John and Claire, again I know I've said before but I'm forever grateful for this fragrance. Thank you so so much. And of course it is representing the act of kindness. So Burnt Cedar Rainbow Doves is a, a very smoky sweet scent. It's very woody, it has cedar obviously, there's orange blossom, there's rose and geranium. It's a very thick, like glupious sort of scent. It's got like oil resins and smoky varnishes, thick fumes of lacquer, kind of smoky without it being a typical kind of bonfire scent. Um, but it also has a sweetness riding through everything and it's quite a sickly sweetness. It's like a sugared almond accord, thick, heavy, creamy and oily. Very unique, very beautiful, and very much a symbol of an act of kindness. So 
That is Burnt Cedar Rainbow Dows by 4160 Tuesdays. So the next virtue is diligence, and that is the opposite to sloth. It's all about having full concentration at work, keeping busy, keeping motivated. So which fragrance gets my body motivated and my mind sharp? Well, I have chosen Molecule 01 by Eccentric Molecules. Keeping busy, keeping busy, keeping busy, busy. So Molecule 01 is probably the most hyped up fragrance from Eccentric Molecules. But for those who don't know, it's a very simple fragrance with an isolated note of ISO E Super. A molecule that's usually used in other fragrances among other notes to give a fragrance better longevity and to give it a kind of fresh watery touch. But in here it's very beautiful on its own. To me this smells a bit woody, um, a bit watery, but with a slightly acidic touch. It actually smells a bit like pear drops. Yeah, a slightly uh, sweet pear drop kind of scent. Not everyone can smell this fragrance. I can, and I really enjoy it. It also smells a little bit like fresh but very clean sweat in a very pure angelic way. The reason I've chosen it for diligence is because it's the one I'd wear to the gym when I used to go to the gym. It masks your own sweat in a way, but replaces it with a really, like I say, a really clean, um, just refreshing scent. I once described this as like having vinegar on your chips. It doesn't smell like vinegar, but it's just something that cuts through grease or something that keeps it pure and clean and watery. In a, in a lovely, sparkling, woody way. And with that sort of hint of pear, it's a really hard one to describe. It's just the perfect sense of wear for heavy exercise and to exude angelic perspiration. Molecule 01 by Eccentric Molecules for the virtue of diligence. So we've all heard the saying, patience is a virtue, and that is our next virtue. And it's one I'm most guilty of not exercising enough in my life, which subsequently makes me more guilty of its opposition, which of course is wrath. Patience, of course, means the endurance under difficult circumstances. Fragrance for patience is really beautiful and a little bit exciting because it is Oud Violet Intense by Fragrance Dubois. Whoops. <laughs> this rather indulgent fragrance is my new obsession. And I've chosen it for patience because, frankly, if I hadn't had the patience to get through what was quite a ghastly opening, I would never have discovered the beauty within. Oud Violet Intense is a bright and musky, woody, rooty and somewhat ghostly fragrance. It's one that I find really hard to describe and I've worn it a lot now and the more I wear it the more I love it. The more I get lost in the scent without really ever putting my finger on exactly how it smells. So like I said the opening was a rather ghastly when I first smelled this and it did take a bit of patience before getting into the mid. It opens up quite musky like damp earth, like a, a dewy tree stump. As that kind of settles a little bit, you get this ghostly concoction of woods or oud, nutmeg, black pepper, elamai, citruses. It doesn't smell citrusy, and actually there's no violet in here. Combination, like I say, that ghostly presence gives you this violet nuance. The citruses just make it slightly bright around the edges, like a fog with a hint of sunlight. Elamai is like a, it's a lemony tree resin, so you get that, that resinous feel to it as well. One that has more of a growing appeal than a mass appeal, and it's one that I reach for far too easily. I never planned or expected to ever have a fragrance to blow in my collection. It has become a true love and dare I say a staple. So that is Fragrance du Bois, Oud Violet Intense, to represent the virtue of patience. So the next virtue is charity, an unlimited generosity and loving towards others. And its opposition in sin is greed. So when I think about charity, I do think about the unlimited generosity of others. And those are people in FRAGCOM. And I've been really fortunate to have received so many amazing things from people in FRAGCOM. Unlimited samples, help, advice, support, friendships. And so many amazing people who I could talk about in that capacity. But I'm going to summarise it with one person. One person who's the kind of the heart and soul, the fairy godmother of the fragrance community, perfume guru. Well, it's Claire. <laughs> it's Murphy Gurley. So I've picked a fragrance that represents Claire, who obviously in turn represents the fragrance community. And I've chosen Violet in Love by Nikolai. Oh, poo. <laughs> we'll just leave it like that. She's like she's dressed up for the derby. So Violet in Love is a pretty violet, fruity little scent. It's a soft, easy-wearing, happy-go-lucky little violet scent. It gets sweetness from raspberry and lemon. It's got that classic lipsticky violet scent with the rose, orris, and the violet. 
But there's a really interesting and pleasant dose of coriander in here, which I enjoy, and it gives it a bit of spiciness and a bit of earthiness, and makes it more interesting, and that comes through a lot stronger as it dries down. I love the fact the violet still is the main star in this. It doesn't disappear, and it remains like a really beautiful violet fragrance. I can't take it seriously with that feather on. And I've chosen it because I know that Claire loves violet. I know she has this fragrance now. She also enjoys it. And it's just a lovely little fragrance to represent the generosity and charity of the fragrance community. So that is The Violet in Love by Nikolai. Ooh. Our last virtue is that that is opposite to pride, and that is humility. The being of modest, reverential and polite. This is a lovely virtue. For whatever reason, I hold this one in the highest regard. I've got such a lovely fragrance to represent humility, and it's one that's really stolen my heart. It's like nothing else I've got in my entire collection, and I'm so happy to have it. And that is Fawn by Thomas O'Brien. Now, anyone who's anyone will know that Thomas is a very knowledgeable and sweet and charming reviewer from the channel Ouch110. Tom is such an articulate reviewer, like he... He can describe a fragrance to perfection. He's very experienced, he knows his fragrance, and this is the one that he's created. It's so charming, I love the concept. I love anything mysterious and mythical, and of course the fawn is a mythical creature. Half man, half goat, very midsummer night's dream. It's the concept that, that got my attention and drew me in. And the scent is just joy, like it, it just makes me happy somehow. I must show you the presentation of how it arrived because it's just so charming. So it's a beautiful thick velvet pouch and it has this autumnal splendour going on. We have leaves, we have more leaves, okay, we have this adorable little mini pine cone which I'm just dropping on. So cute. This is how it all arrives and it is a very autumnal scent but also quite spring-like. Very carefree, airy, clean, fresh unique and very outdoorsy scent. Every time I smell this, if I feel like I'm running through a meadow at the end of summer, running through tall grasses that are just starting to die down and, and dry up and start to turn hay-like. And as you run through that meadow, you whip up this flurry of air that includes grasses and dried leaves and herbs and flower heads and husks and all these slightly spicy, outdoory smells in the air. There's English herbs, soft tea and tobacco in here that gives you a bit of that. There's also a soft, clean, soapy vibe in here, which is definitely coming from the white florals. There's a lovely lotus that I can detect in here that smells so clean and watery. But you've also got a lovely, woody, earthy depth in here. You've got Poppinax, dark amber, and there's musks. It's, it's just such a clean, happy, outdoorsy little fragrance. And I absolutely love it. And I've chosen it for humility because I do think of Tom as being very humble, very polite. But also that term reverential means to give praise. And through humility I give praise to Tom for this absolutely beautiful fragrance. So that is Fawn by Thomas O'Brien for the virtue of humility. And that concludes my seven heavenly virtues, seven heavenly fragrances. Really hope you've enjoyed the video and the whole collaboration. If myself, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone else's videos. And heaven knows there can never be enough virtue. Actually, what is your favourite virtue? Do you have a favourite? Which do you think is the most virtuous virtue? On that note, I bid you all good tidings, pure thoughts and clean smells. That's all guys. Take care. Over and out.